Welcome everyone today. I'm going to start off today's session by acknowledging that UBC Vancouver's campus is located on the traditional, ancestral, and unceded territory of the Musqueam people. I'm so excited to have you all here with us. If any of you were in our last session, you'll know that we're going to start off the session with a UBC hoodie giveaway. So I'm just going to draw the winner right now. And the winner is Grace Kemp. So Grace Kemp, congratulations. You are our winner for the first hoodie today. And if you all stick around, um, you are going to get a chance to win another hoodie at the end of this session. So uh, exciting. Grace, I will send you an email later today with all the details of how to claim your hoodie. But congratulations. And now I'm going to pass over the session to my uh, colleagues, Carolina and Dr. John Nakane. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much, Aaron. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to those of you who could make it out today. Uh, my name is John Nakane. I'm an assistant professor of teaching over in the uh, UBC Materials Engineering Department, as well as the program director for a program called Integrated Engineering as well. Um, so it's a pleasure for, for me to, to be here as uh, part of the, the crew that says hello and welcomes you to, to UBC and what it has to offer. Uh, and Carolina, uh, introduce yourself as well. Hi, I'm Carolina. My pronouns are she and hers. And I'm a first year pre-biomedical engineering student at UBC. Before coming to UBC, I was kind of uncertain um, about whether I wanted to choose engineering or not. And so I'm here today to ask John some questions that I had and you might be thinking of as well, which include why is engineering a degree that you should consider? Why is engineering a good career? How is engineering making an impact in our world? And much more. These are some questions that I had before coming to UBC and we're gonna explore them today. One of the things that really excited me about engineering is how it can be a really creative field, whether it's solving problems in a creative way or even innovating to make other people's lives better. To me, engineering is so much more than just numbers as it's really taking STEM concepts and applying it to real life applications, which really makes it stand out from other degrees in STEM. Yeah, ab absolutely, Carolina. When I think about uh, engineering, it's problem solving and, and impact as well. So, and, and I think a, a lot of the events of, of the recent uh, uh, six months and a year have, have pointed this out as well. Um, as one example, uh, we had a, a group of, of engineers uh, working on um, um, ventilators. So, so this was a, a group of our biomedical engineering uh, graduate students that had put together uh, a solution for uh, creating low cost ventilators uh, when there was uh, quite a panic and, and need for, for, for these devices uh, in the world. Um, they entered into a competition. There were, I think, thousands of entries. Uh, and the crew from UBC came out in the top 10 out of, out of all of these ones. Uh, and so to have that kind of impact and to have that kind of uh, response to something so timely, uh, to me, that's really something that uh, stands out about um, how engineers can and bridge together technical solutions, uh, societal issues, and, and really step up to respond. Uh, although these were graduate students, a, a number of them uh, went, uh, came through the, uh, the, their undergraduate programs right here at UBC as well and, and got their training too. Uh, another area where, where our students uh, are sort of look for impact uh, are things to do with uh, sustainability and the kinds of projects that they will do outside of the classroom. Uh, as one example, as a, like a student initiated uh, uh, endeavor, uh, this is, uh, we have a group called Third Quadrant. And this is a group that's focused on uh, sustainable design and sustainable issues when it comes to uh, building designs, infrastructure, things like that. And so they, they looked for ways to, to have impact. Uh, they found themselves uh, a competition uh, from the US Department of Energy uh, in the Solar Decathlon, it's called. Uh, it was held back in April. And the team uh, put together the solution and, and did extremely well uh, in this competition for, for, again, pushing the boundaries of, of putting together a team that's looking at a solution that requires some electrical background, some mechanical background, uh, environmental issues, energy issues, um, all together into to one um, type of uh, overall solution, uh, trying to, to lower our carbon footprints and, and really trying to, to, I think, change the direction in which people think about design, think about the way that, that buildings are put together. Uh, and for them to build up the skills in their classroom and then to, to actually work on the projects themselves as, as students that are initiating it uh, is, is quite a thing to see. Uh, so right here uh, at based out of, out of UBC. Yes, yeah, so be sure to check out Third Quadrant Design and many of our other student teams and booths 
um, from 12 to 1 p.m. today. There's so many teams that allow students to get hands-on experience outside of the classroom in any field, and it doesn't matter what engineering program you're in. It also doesn't matter which year you're in, as I have quite a few friends in first year who are heavily involved in design teams as well, and you don't necessarily need experience in that domain. So I have friends who are in first year who are involved in sustain engineering, as well as UBC Rocket, and there's even a first year mentorship program with UBC Best that's super useful as well. The next question I would like to know more about is how can a career in engineering set me up for success? Will I be locked into one field for the rest of my career, or are there are several other possibilities? Well, so just drawing on a sort of how you get locked or, or the opportunities that are around, I think starting with this image and just seeing the kinds of clubs and teams you can get experience with, what's really great about it is that uh, there are people in teams that have um, maybe not necessarily directly related with the programs that they're going through as well. So we have civil engineers competing with robotics teams. We have uh, robotics students that are, are, are focused on sustainability teams as well. So there's a lot of crossover that can happen with training and experience. Now, where does that go for when it comes to, to jobs? Well, um, um, uh, we, we managed to dig in and find some statistics about uh, one metric of success and that uh, or of outcomes and that is uh, uh, salaries uh, and of what engineers do or how they do and uh, pulling from uh, StatsCan, Statistics Canada uh, about um, uh, sort of uh, medium uh, salaries for, for different uh, um, areas. Um, engineers do quite well when it comes to having uh, uh, people in various areas, whether it's mining and mineral engineering, electrical engineering, uh, manufacturing engineering, which is a new program at UBC, but uh, is longstanding in, in Canada. Um, it, we, we do quite well when it comes to the salaries. Now, uh, with StatsCan, they actually split things up between uh, male and female. So these are the, the male stats. And for the female stats, again, the, the numbers are, are quite strong when it comes to uh, engineering being a, a, a really good um, um, foundation for, for, for people uh, earning a good living as well as uh, having an impact in, in the world is round. So again, the, the training that you get through going through engineering gives you uh, a skill set that allows you to focus in an area that, that you might be, be studying along the way, uh, but also to branch out. So like I said, students are branching out when they're even in undergrad, joining different teams to match their interests. And even after graduation, finding other ways to, to pursue uh, things that they're passionate about. Uh, for some, that actually means going into uh, things like um, um, healthcare. And I know a number of that have gone on to their uh, medical doctor degrees. Uh, and others, it's public service. So we have a recent alum from uh, UBC Engineering, Bowen Ma, who is a, a local uh, MLA in our provincial legislature. And we have other alums who, who find other ways to, to branch out as well. Uh, and, and end up joining some of the biggest names that you can imagine when it comes to the, the companies uh, throughout the world, the names like the Microsofts, the Teslas, the Apples, the Googles, the, the Amazons uh, across, across the board. Um, so, uh, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, now that I have a better sense of the places that an engineering degree can take me, what do I have to look forward to as a student in UBC engineering? Yeah. Well, Carolina, uh, it being a first year, you're, you're getting a, a sense of the, 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 the scope and introduction to, that we have at UBC. We've got a, a general uh, first year program that does introduce you to all the different disciplines and programs. And events like today help to, to uh, show our current students and, and, and uh, other people that are interested, uh, opportunities that come in. Um, also in first year, we, we, we make sure that we give students a, a, a great broad introduction and uh, into the, uh, the, the engineering design process. And really that gets started with our core course, uh, APSI 100 and 101. And in that course, it's, it's a project-based course, it's a team-based course, and you're doing things, you're doing activities, you're doing things that uh, mimic what you would do as an engineer in practice as well. So that means uh, working on uh, design, you're working on innovative uh, something for a particular client for a particular problem uh, and we switch you up every every few weeks on different problems so that you can really dive in as well. 
Uh, engineering really is collaborative and it relies on teams of people working together uh, and you'll be doing that throughout your careers. Uh, and whether that's designing assistive devices, whether it's uh, creating clean water uh, solutions, whether it's trying to do uh, some fairly, fairly complex um, uh, modeling of what the real world actually looks like when it comes to the environment and folding that in. Um, those are all activities that we do uh, in APSI 100 and 101. And I think that sets you up for all sorts of success uh, that comes afterwards. Now, other things that can, you can do to, to augment your degree um, as you go through are things like uh, getting experience that happens outside of the UBC uh, environment as well. So we have things like our co-op program, uh, which provides students up to 20 months of paid work experience as part of the degree. Uh, and we have uh, ways for students to participate internationally uh, or to study abroad through Glo Go Global and a coordinated international experience as well. And all these sort of opportunities students can, can review, uh, can decide how they want to fold them into their timing and into their programs uh, and, and really give them an experience that's unique to them as they go through uh, their, their time as UBC students. That sounds amazing. You'll personally be able to talk to the co-op and international opportunities in the program fair from 11 to 1 p.m. today, right after this presentation. So we've already mentioned our design teams, but there are also lots of clubs that you can get involved with. Whether you want to join something that's related to engineering or something completely different, there are so many options at UBC. We also have the Engineering Undergraduate Society in Vancouver and the Engineering Society in Okanagan, which are two student government opportunities that represent students and provide professional development opportunities, tutoring support and social activities for students. I've personally participated in a lot of the EUS tutoring sessions before midterms, which I found super helpful. And they also help host things like game nights and anime movie nights for those who are interested in that as well. Fun. Yeah, so if, if you are like me and want to make a positive impact in our world, either by responding to a global crisis, impacting climate change and making our world more sustainable, or even by designing technology to help others, engineering is the degree that will let you do that and so much more. I hope you'll be joining me as a student at UBC Engineering. Yeah, well, uh, th thank you very much. And 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 on uh, on on my end, it, it's a pleasure to to meet uh, uh, students that are, are are passionate about different areas and passionate about wanting to impact the world as well. Um, I do a fair amount of teaching in first year, uh, so the APSI 101 class that I'd mentioned, I'm an instructor there, uh, and it's it's always uh, it's always heartwarming and it's always inspiring to meet students uh, that are trying new things and and have joined. Um, engineering and have joined really UBC, knowing that uh, we are supportive of all these different kinds of, of passions of all the things that people are interested in as well, uh, and do our best to try to, to, to link up those students and their passions with the opportunities that we have at UBC uh, as well. The fact that we have so many of these student uh, competition teams around, I think is a reflection of how much we want to have students sort of branch out and try to try these things and, and have impact the way that they want to have impact uh, as well. So th thank you very much, uh, and th thank you, Carolina. Uh, and uh, yeah, I, I, I think uh, I see Aaron has popped back in uh, as well. I think, I think there's things to give away. <laughs> We're going to answer some questions first before ah, okay. I give away anything else. Um, so I do want to just preface this with we. I am seeing a lot of questions about admissions still. Um, so if you weren't able to join our admissions presentation that happened just before this one, there will be a recording available within the next 24 hours or so on our website. So you can check that one out. Um, and you can also go to the Engineering Academic Services booth and they can help answer admissions questions as well. So we aren't going to focus on those admission focused ones right now, um, but we do have some questions that are more centered around uh, what engineers do and uh, what uh, some of those other kind of areas are as well. So student experience and things like that. Uh, so the first question I have is, uh, I, so I was first considering computer engineering and after some research, it turned out that most people with a computer engineering degree end up with a software job. Do you think it is worth taking computer engineering when you will end up with a job most computer science people are getting into? Uh, interesting. So, so there is a, a going to be a distinction, and getting a chance to go and check out the uh, electrical and computer engineering booths uh, later, uh, you can get their uh, input as well. Uh, 
from what I've seen, from the experience that students get in the classroom and the kinds of jobs afterwards, I think there is an overlap for sure with the kinds of jobs that uh, a number of people will get um, in terms of software development, in terms of designing apps and, and applications uh, for big companies, for small companies throughout. Uh, but I also think that uh, software engineering, or excuse me, computer engineering uh, as a background also gives you that bridge, right? It gives you that bridge to, to understanding how the software is going to interact with the hardware. So if you have an interest in things like uh, the latest uh, graphics cards for your computers, if the NVIDIA series uh, excites you and it was something that you were, were tuned into and, and checking out, that's something where computer engineers are going to have their biggest, uh, the kind of impact. If you're concerned about uh, the, the amount of energy that's used in these server farms uh, that's, that are powering all of the, the things that we have on the web, you want to be able to have a, a lower carbon impact, uh, carbon footprint that way, computer engineering is the way to go for things like that. Uh, it's that bridge and that gap between the software and the hardware. Are there, are there uh, jobs in, in that world? Absolutely. Uh, is there still overlap in, in people that will have straight up software focused jobs going through uh, computer engineering and computer science say? Uh, yes, there, there's overlap there too. Uh, but, but, and, and so being able to uh, talk to people in computer science and in computer engineering, you can uh, get a sense of, of what's up. So, so go check out their booth uh, in, in a little bit and uh, ask them that same question. Awesome, thanks. Um, another one that uh, if a student is really into uh, cars and automotive kind of things, what sort of engineering uh, program, uh, and I know that there might be kind of a few, would be good for them to consider? So I'll, I'll, I'll take this one. Um, uh, there's, there's a whole bunch. So uh, mechanical and electrical are two that will stand out. And we have a number of students going through those that want to get into automotive. Um, in my own program, uh, or two programs, in integrated engineering, we, we have a great history of, of our graduates going and working in Tesla in all sorts of different areas for the mechanical group, for the battery group uh, as well. Um, materials engineering also hires, uh, has some of our graduates working at, at, in automotive too, because materials engineers uh, and manufacturing kind of tie together. And, and so there's been a, a, a group of students going again to, to Tesla working, working there, uh, but also going out e to Eastern Canada. Uh, the, a lot of car manufacturing happens there uh, as well. I think there's also going to be computer engineers as there's more sensors and more data that's coming in as well. And of all places, I think one, one sort of interesting note is, is actually in uh, civil engineering. Uh, there, it's actually the people worrying about the infrastructure. So it's not the cars, it's, it's, the, it's how cars are gonna interact with the world. So all the transportation engineering, all of the road planning, uh, things that have real impact on transportation, uh, that happens through civil. So, so you never quite know which, which areas are, are around until you, you dive in and, 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 and see. Uh, and again, that's one of the strengths of UBC in that uh, we get you to participate as engineering students and we get you to dive into each of the programs and get a sense of, of what's, what's actually around and what opportunities are there in each of the programs too. So um, be, be uh, aware of what options are, are around, but be absolutely open to all sorts of things uh, when, you, when you show up. Yeah. Um. Um, and I will mention also check out the teams and clubs booth because we have quite a few automotive teams um, and you can talk with them and they'll tell you what different programs our students are in and it might be something completely that you didn't even think was possible but they're still working on an automotive team doing a whole lot of different things we have teams that are solar based so even that adds a little bit of a different specialization to it um, so all sorts of different options. So definitely check out those teams and clubs. They'll be available from 12 to one as well. Uh, so a question that I do often get from a lot of students is how practical is it to begin my undergrad studies as an engineering student um, only to apply to medical school after four years? They'd like to use their future engineering studies to fulfill the med school prerequisites as well. So I'll start a little bit with those prerequisites. So definitely check out the med school that you might be interested in going to because they do all have different requirements. Um, I know for sure if you're coming to UBC's uh, medical school that they do require that you have six credits of first year English. And that's something that we help you out with when it comes time to register for classes. Um, but it does mean it kind of altering your schedule a little bit. Um, and we do recommend that you have some, uh, some extra chemistry and things like that. So there are a few extra courses that you might need to fit in to get those prerequisites. 
So definitely check out whatever med school you're interested in going to. But I do know that we have quite a few students who may uh, eventually go on to medical school. Um, John, do you have anything that you want to add about this piece? No, I, I, I think uh, going through a common first year, um, you you can get it, you can do two things. One is um, get in um, the, the, the core of, of the engineering program, I think uh, satisfies some of those requirements. Um, the other is that you can then get connected with a number of the students that are going through that process uh, as well. And some recent alums that are in medical school and, and being able to, to uh, get their feedback and guidance about which courses to take, what, how to prepare yourself, what other opportunities you should spend your time doing as far as uh, volunteering and, and things to augment your applications as well. Um, so all of those things can, can absolutely happen after you arrive uh, and, and get started as a student. Awesome. Um, so another question that I've gotten is, how is COVID-19 affecting co-op opportunities? Um, and so obviously COVID-19 has affected how our students are studying and working and all those sorts of things. I can tell you, and this is also great to go talk to the co-op booth about today, um, but I do know that a lot of our students have still fulfilled their co-op terms even throughout the summer. Some of them maybe started a little bit later than normal with everything kind of changing, uh, but I know many students that were still able to do co-op. Some of them were working from home. Some of them were going into work in spaces using all the required PPE and everything like that. Um, and then others are actually still on site in remote locations and doing work there. So there's lots of different opportunities for co-op. Carolina, do you wanna tell us a little bit about kind of what your courses are looking like right now? I know it's not co-op exactly, but um, you're currently in residence at UBC, um, but do you wanna tell us kind of what your courses have been like so far? Yeah, for sure. So essentially, I'm still taking all the courses that I would be if they were in person, but everything is virtual. A lot of our profs use different pro platforms for that as well, which is really interesting. So I actually do get to connect with my fellow classmates as well, like quite a bit. And we get to still do tutorials and studios and labs and everything like that as well, which is really exciting. Second semester is also going to be online, but I find in general, it's still a good opportunity to learn all that you can um, through all of my classes. And then also be being in residence really helps because I get to interact with fellow pre-biomedical engineering students and engineering students in general as well. Awesome. Um, another question for you, Carolina, what has been your favorite uh, engineering event at UBC so far? Or even is there one that you know about that you're really looking forward to in the future? That's a good question. I know there's like a lot of things that aren't necessarily happy, happening in person, but online, like just because everything is online right now. So I've been looking forward to things like the the e-week that happens. And I think that happens in the spring time as well. So that's super exciting. I think overall, just I really enjoyed connecting with my peers through Jumpstart and then maintaining that sense of community, even though it was virtual, because we get to do a lot of different activities like social events and we study together and things like that. So I, I would say that was my favorite thing so far for sure. Awesome. And John, do you have a favorite event uh, at UBC Engineering? Uh, throughout, throughout the, the year, I think the, the thing that I, I uh, do enjoy are getting a chance to see the outcomes from some of the projects that uh, students work on in, in the first year APSI. Uh, in particular, there's, there's a few uh, that do require them to do some hands-on work. Um, this year, they're doing hands-on work at home. Uh, so getting a chance to see how creative people can be with the supplies that they have at home uh, and in next terms, things that we might, uh, we're planning to, to ship to their homes for them to work on as well. Um, I think there's, there's, there's ways that students sort of are supporting themselves um, in this year in particular to, to try to encourage the, their teammates to, to be creative, to, to try different things and then to document them and share. Um, and, and so that, that's the part I, I like, people stretching themselves just a little bit more than they ever have before with tools that they haven't necessarily tried yet, so. Awesome. We have time for a couple more questions before all of our booths open. So there's a question about how customizable is engineering at UBC? And I know in the last session, we got a few questions about, um, you know, kind of combining different engineering programs and things like that. So John, I think you'd be great to talk about this. Ah, yes. Uh, so it depends on the programs. Uh, it, looking down each of the, the 14, 15 programs that are available, um, 
you can get a sense of how uh, locked in the, the schedules are um, for the courses. Uh, there are some which are quite either quite well regimented or have uh, quite clear distinct options that you can choose. And for, for a lot of things, that's, that's great because it lines you up perfectly with the kind of jobs and opportunities that you're really interested in doing. And for others, there are, are blocks of, of credits that are either um, offer a, a limited amount of freedom, a fair amount of freedom, or lots of freedom when it comes to where, where you can impact uh, and, and choose the courses to, to really line up with what you're interested in. Um, so depending on your undergrad choices, uh, the programs vary. Uh, in addition, if you're interested, there are ways to augment your uh, degree even beyond what we talked about for co-op uh, and, and those other international experiences. You can add uh, minors to your degree as well. So you can minor in things like mathematics, you can minor in, uh, there's a minor in science as well for those that want to add some, some physics uh, or uh, some, some other options. Um, I have a student who's minoring in, in, with an arts uh, focus and who's looking at uh, urban planning and has added that to her degree as she went through. Um, there's also uh, some dual degree options as well. So people who go through and actually are uh, graduating with a degree in engineering and in arts uh, as well, like full degrees. So, so those possibilities are around to, to, to grow and, and change your degree. Um, and you can learn more about those um, now and, and learn about them as you get started. Uh, there's no, as far as I know, nothing locks you in uh, in first year either. So a lot of those you apply for um, at the end of first year, uh, even, even beyond that. Awesome. Carolina, question specifically for you. What is your favorite course so far? Oh, that's hard. I honestly enjoy like most of my courses. I did really enjoy APSI 160, which is my coding course, which was kind of surprising for me because I didn't think I was going to enjoy programming, but I really like the software side of things. And then I would say I also do love my chemistry course because I really love chemistry. <laughs> Awesome. And one more quick question for Carolina. Um, mm -hmm. How has the pre-biomed uh, timetable been going for you? So it is a lot of work. I'm not going to lie. It is quite a few courses. I'm taking seven courses this semester and six next semester. But overall, I personally really enjoy it because I'm able to not only focus on engineering, but then also focus on specific, like specifically biomedical engineering. So next semester, I'm really excited for my biomed engineering course that I take instead of a general engineering course which um, just allows me to look into things like medical devices and things like that as well. And what I love about the pre-biomedical engineering timetable is it doesn't actually lock you into biomed. You have the choice um, to also apply to other degrees out of your first year like everyone else, but it does guarantee your spot in biomedical engineering in second year as long as you maintain academic standing in like a 72% average. So I do like the, the option to go into other things, but also just kind of customize my first year a little bit more. Awesome. Thank you both so much. I think that's all the time we have for questions today. But before you all go, we have one more winner of a UBC hoodie. So the winner is Sohi Gu. So congratulations, Sohi. And congratulations, Grace, from winning the UBC hoodie earlier. Again, I will be emailing you both with details on how to claim that. Congratulations. Um, I hope you all get to go talk to some of our booths. So different programs, different um, areas like international opportunities, co-op, engineering academic services. Go check those out. You can get to that by going to engineering.ubc.ca slash open house. Um, scroll down to look at our schedule and you can go to the program fair, which is starting right now. So go in and ask your questions. You'll be able to talk to current students, talk to instructors like John. You can talk to advisors and all sorts of different people to get all of your questions answered. So thank you so much for joining us today. I hope you have a great rest of your day and talk to lots of people from UBC Engineering. Thank you. All right. And thank you very much. Hi, everybody.